Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Whimsical where we do everything card making. Uh, as I mentioned the other day, we're going to be doing some flat shaker tags. We're not doing this one specifically. This is just an example I made a few years ago or last year. I don't remember. I think it was last year maybe. Um, but I did a blog for it, which is no longer available. So I thought I would do a video. I'm going to try to do most of the blogs that I did previously as videos because I do think that they come in handy and I have some useful tips and tricks. So um, next year I've kind of planned out some more stuff, but I'll get into that in another video. So um, for today, we're going to be using my gift tag cut file set, um, which is up in my Etsy shop. I'll link it down below, but I'll show it up in the top left corner here as well. There's 20 different tags, shapes that you get, and it's only like $2. So you do get a variety. Um, today I'm going to be using the hexagon shape and then I think this one's called the pill shape. But I thought I would just give you guys like a simple and easy way to do this flat shaker and then this one's a little bit more difficult but not hard. Like you can go around curves no problem. Um, it's just it takes a little bit more work. So we'll get right into it. So I cut three of each tag. I'm going to use one as my backer one as my like pattern layer um, and then the other one we're going to cut the top off of it and use that to mask our tape. So with these obviously like there's a hole in the top here so if I was just to put um, acetate or whatever you're using here um, once the hole's punched for the string then you're gonna get your sequin bits and whatever out so you have to mask off this area and cover it so you kind of start your acetate from here down so I'll show you how I do that but first we're gonna have to color an ink blend I think because I think this one I'm gonna use a couple of new um, NFT sets these ones were adorable I had to jump on these you can never have too many snowmen and polar bear and penguin sets so this was I'm like this is the hat to have for me so I'll probably use one of these cute little snowmen um, and then for the polar bear I think I'll put the polar bear on this one and then I think I'm gonna use this one that's waving it's pretty cute maybe I'll have it so that he's catching a snowflake or something um, and then the other one Again, we'll use the snowman, but I'm going to do them a bit differently. So this one that has the snowman on it, I'm going to stamp directly onto the tag and color it on here. This one, I'm going to ink blend the background and then put the polar bear on top of the acetate layer. And then the snowman will be inside because I want it to make it look like it's snowing. So first we're going to ink blend some backgrounds, I think, for the bear. I want to do it in teals. I have, I almost have my set complete. I keep ordering little bits at a time. These are all the Simon positively saturated inks in the ink cubes. Um, and you get like a set of six for $20 US. Um, and I was slowly ordering them every time I make orders. With Simon, my last order, I just added the last three sets that I needed because I have been ordering quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Or the last couple of months, I guess. Um, still waiting for my last one, but hopefully it'll be here tomorrow because it's in Canada now. So yeah, I think I'll use, these are like my favorite trio here probably. I think it's like the, oh yeah, ocean, surf, and sea foam. They're like teal colors. Um, so I think I will ink blend those. And I keep them in these like, these are for like meant for like beads or embroidery. Floss. I got them from the dollar store. I'm gonna do an organization video probably in the new year as well. Um, but I just find it very easy to store ink cubes in here. It doesn't take up much space. I can store them vertically on a shelf and like this is how much space it takes up. I do have a third one with my lawn fawn ones. But again, like I fit, I think there's like 36 slots in here. So I fit 36 colors in one tray and it only takes up this much space. So Get these at the dollar store for your ink cubes and store them upright and so you'll save a lot of space but for now i'm just going to start with these three colors
Okay, so that's all the ink loading I'm doing. I'm um, actually probably gonna get my distress sprayer and spray this with water. The reason I switched from the Lawn Fun inks to the uh, positively saturated ones were because these are water reactive. And I love the texture that that gives. Um, so I'll just set this aside to dry while we work on the next background. And then I just ink blended the top of this one because we're just going to cut off the top anyway. Okay, and then this next one, like I said, we're going to ink. Oh, my hands are a mess. Okay, so this one I'm going to color with my Copic markers. So I'm going to, well, my elbow marker and I only have a couple of Copics actually. So I'm just going to line this up with my Misty and And then this is good for sh checking out sizes. That one's pretty cute. That one's cute. I think I'm going to do the waving one. This one as well. And you don't want them too high up because I'm probably going to cover a good portion of that. Maybe from this end to this end. So this should be good. And because this is a new stamp, I just want to condition it. So just prop off this until it looks a little cloudy. Set that aside, and then I will just speed through my coloring. Okay, so that's that colored. Very cute. I added uh, some white highlights. My pen's having a little difficulties today. And I also used my Sakura um, clear jelly roll. Just added a little sparkle highlight on the snow hill that I added in the background. Um, I think I'm still going to add some controlled snow. which might be better with my acrylic paint at this point. So as always, you don't even need a full drop. And I think I grabbed a smaller stylus today, but that's okay. Yeah. And then I'll let this dry while I color the polar bear in. So again, like I didn't even use a drawer. If you wanted to, you probably just dip it in the bottle itself, so you're not wasting. But the, like a, this dollar store bottle will last you forever until it dries out, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm actually gonna add a s couple small dots to this as well, just so it looks like it's part of the background. And then we'll set that aside to dry. And then we'll stamp a color in the folder. I didn't really stamp my, my snowman. I don't think he needs it today though. You don't add too much color to the snowman. So I think I'll just leave it for today. Okay, and then for the polar bear, I think I'll also do the scarf red um, because red and teal looks really nice together. 
and today I'm just starting off with the darker colors and then blending out the lighter color. Sometimes I do the base layer, then I'll add the sheeting and then I blend out again with the base layer, which gives you a bit more smoother results, but um, this also works. It just depends on my mood and today I just want to do it. And for coloring polar bears, I usually use warmer, lighter grays. Polar bears are white, white, if you've ever seen an actual like photo or video footage of them. They're not pure white. They are a bit more on the creamy side. Um, so like a warm gray one and two is usually what I use from this biennial set. Um, probably the same with any Copic markers as well. I don't have the warm grays for the Copics. Maybe one day I'll grab those, but not right now. And then I don't color the whole bear in either. I just, um, I use the warm gray one for shadow, and then I use the warm gray two for just darker shadows, basically. It just adds a little bit of warmth to the character and a bit of color as well. These are like new, so these are pretty juicy. Don't open your new Copic markers over your project. Um, otherwise that might happen. I'm lucky that it would actually hit the polar bear itself. And this little guy we are going to restamp. Okay, I'm just gonna go take this over to my scanning cut and cut him out. Okay, now we have our cute little polar bear all ready to go. And he'll go on the front. Oh, that's so cute. I love red and teal together. They look great. I'm going to actually try to blend this out a bit more. There. Okay. Um, I think we'll start with the easier one, which is this one. I'm just going to grab my cellophane. Uh, again, this is like um, cello wrap you use for gift baskets. Um, so I'm just going to cut, this should be okay for both. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to cut the top of this piece off, and I think I'll cut it next to edge here. This out I'll cut this one as well. And this one I will cut too with my fingers. And I'm going to use my red line tape because it's the thinnest double sided tape. Now. And what I'm going to do is this line this up. And then I'll line it up with the, my grid mat just so I know where to put the tape. And I need to put the tape above that line. You could use a pencil mark as well. It's a bit quicker to use my grid mat. And I'll do the same on this one. I'm supposed to be working on this one first. So this one, I know it's edge to edge here, so I think I can put it just a bit above. It's a bit crooked, but that's okay. Um, and then you're gonna take off the tape. Okay. And then what I do is I line up one edge of this to that. And then you've got it sealed in. And then you can fold over all your other edges. Um, so I'm just gonna trim this down a bit along each side. Um, I'll leave the corners for now. And I'm going to tape down this side first. This tape does not tear, which I don't like, but 
don't lose it very often, so it's usually okay. So then we're gonna take the release paper off half. I'm gonna fold the side down first. The top's gonna be okay because it's gonna be sealed in um, from here, so we might wanna tape it down a little bit. I'm just gonna use this little extra piece of tape I have here just to fold it from the top over. And I'll just leave it. Um, and then this side. And I think I'll do one more. Okay, and then I might have done it a little bit too tight, <laughs> as usual. Um, but I'm going to try to dump. Some of this in there and this is just some iridescent glitter I got from Walmart like years ago this is pretty much the same as Simon's um, unicorn confetti and I think that's enough all over the place right now. And I will glue down my other two sides. Okay, so we got a cute little like snowman shaker tag. And with the iridescent um, bits, you can like still see the image through it, which is great. Um, and then we'll just glue the top on. Just use my liquid glue. And you could do these toppers like any color you want, like a nice like silver foil would be good. Or if you want to do it a color to coordinate to a scarf, that would be fine. Um, and then we can actually glue the back on as well. And then I'm going to put this under something heavy, so I'm going to put it under my Simon Positive Ring. I don't actually know what it's called, um, but it's like silicone palm mat, and I'll just put my coffee mug on it. I'll link the all in the description down below, too. Um, so same thing with this one. It's just a little bit more tricky going around the corners. So we'll line it up at the top. Now I'll turn around it a bit. Okay. Um, then we'll take. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one side off first. I'm going to try not to do it as tight this time. Just gently fold it over. And then on the curve, you might just have to stick down some extra tape. You basically just want to make like little creases and pleats into it. It's not perfect. Um, when you do a circle, it's a little bit harder because you will see the points a little bit more. I'm going to try to... No, that one's stuck down. Okay. There's like this one little piece that sticks out, but I'll have to live with it. Um, so you just want to like kind of carefully just go around and actually this tool helps this process. I've not done it like this before, but so you just want to like fold it and then press it into your tape.
And then I think I will stop there because I need some space. So yeah, you can see where it sticks out a few areas, but um, it's not the end of the world. And then we'll finish sealing it. If it was above this line, that's not, it's like slightly below it. If it was above this, I would just cut it off um, because your um, bits are sealed in there. So I'm just going to take my red line tape, fold it over, and then trim it off like that. And then we have our other sheet. Okay, so I think we can glue the top on this one. This one's actually a really cute shape for Tay. I like this, the pill shape. I have not used this one yet. And again, like this might look cute in like a matching ear doesn't foil. And everybody likes a good shaker. Okay, everybody I know that I've made shaker cards for love them. So a mini tag version is even better. I think for this one, because there is so much bulk, I'm going to add the tape on the back. Okay, and then we can attach our polar bear, which again, I'll probably just add with the tape just so it sticks better. And that should be good. I like to burnish this down with either a bone folder or this tool works great because then I can push and pick. This this is like the best tool in my craft room probably. Um, I use it for everything now. And it's just a weeding tool for your Cricut that I got from like Dollar Tree. There we go. Now the polar bear covers most of it, but that's okay. It's still the bits in the background still shake around. And then for string, light red and light baker string. And again, I'm just gonna cut it to about 14 inches. And this stuff's a bit thicker than the embroidery floss, like slightly, so I'll just do the one. I always feed mine through the front, as I mentioned in the last video, but you do it whatever way you want. Okay, so those are our flat shaker cards. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Um, comment down below if this is something you would try um, and what you would do with it. And if you do do anything with it, let me know. Tag me on Instagram so I can see your photos. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks. Bye.